Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 25th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. The Tennessee State Senate unanimously voted to pass a bill which will require drunk drivers to pay child support if they kill a parent during a drunk driving incident. The bill gives the convicted person one year to begin payments if they are if they are unable to due to incarceration. And the payments will be required to continue until the child is 18 years old. The bill cites several reasons why the payments to the child will be necessary, including maintaining the child's standard of living, the financial resources and needs of the child, as well as the financial needs of the surviving parent or guardian. Well, what a well-designed twist that puts alcohol abusers on notice that they have to pay for their poor decisions. In other news, Turkish prosecutors have filed a lawsuit to shut down one of the country's most respected women's rights groups. We will stop femicide. The group publicizes the murder and abuses of women in Turkey. Fidan Atisselam, the group's secretary general, said the lawsuit accuses the group of conducting activities that violate Turkey's laws and morals. The group has also been accused of destroying the family based on the pretext of defending women's rights. Last year, Turkey's president decided to withdraw from the Istanbul Convention, which requires countries to set up laws to prevent and prosecute violence against women. We Will Stop Femicide has been openly criticizing the decision. The group says 280 women were killed in Turkey last year, with many of the murders committed by family members, and another 217 women died in suspicious circumstances, including those officially registered as suicide. We Will Stop Femicide organizes rallies to bring attention to violence against women. So how is it destroying family values unless family values includes the man's right to abuse and assault women? In other news, William Hussell, a former Ohio doctor, was acquitted of murder after he was accused of hastening the deaths of 14 patients by ordering large doses of fentanyl as painkillers for critically ill patients from 2015 to 2018. Most of the ICU patients were in their 70s and 80s, although a few were as young as their late 30s. Hussell faced one count of murder for each patient and life in prison with no chance of parole for 15 years if he were found guilty of even one count of murder. He had his license suspended in 2019 and after the trial last week, he was found not guilty on all counts. It's not funny how Redonda Vaught, a former nurse criminally prosecuted for a fatal drug error in 2017, now faces three to six years in prison for neglect and one to two years for negligent homicide. But this man overdosed 14 people with 10 times the amount of fentanyl, yet he walked free? Hmm. Let's hear from our favorite medical toxicologist, Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, the co-director of the Poison Control Center in Washington, DC. Dr. Kelly, what do you think happened here? So this is a really sad and tragic case. This is not something that we typically see in hospitals at all. This doctor was working at night in the ICU with minimal oversight. Um, and this is something that unfortunately happened. And, and he, got, he got acquitted, it's really surprising. We should know that in the hospital, fentanyl is a common drug that's used. We talk a lot about fentanyl being in the illicit drug supply, but it's also a prescription drug that's used for pain. But we typically use very, very low doses, like maybe 100 micrograms, 50 micrograms. It's a very potent medication. In this case, patients were getting very high doses, like 1,000 1, milligrams or 2,000 milligrams of fentanyl. Those are high doses that when used by people who are not used to using drugs, it will kill them. So these were very high doses. This is a very concerning case. 
Um, you know, ethically, it's it's sort of murky because these patients were at the end of their lives anyway. And so I think the argument was that he was trying to help their pain and be compassionate. People should know that this doctor had a very well-known and very good defense attorney who also represented Casey Anthony and Aaron Hernandez and some other high profile um, people. So, you know, unfortunately, when you have a good attorney, sometimes you can get acquitted for crimes that may have been very, very serious. And that may have been what happened in this case. But Dr. Kelly, now I'm worried about my next visit to a doctor. 14 people died. Was this murder? So the jury said that it wasn't. The jury in this case said that it was not um, consistent with murder. But, you know, and again, we don't know all the details. We don't know if these patients maybe had some sort of a tolerance to the effects of the drug. So maybe they were able to tolerate higher doses. You know, I wasn't in the courtroom. I don't know all the details. All that I can say is these were very high doses of fentanyl that were given to these patients. And it is very concerning. Um, and in this particular case, I think the hospital is, um, was fined. And also there were many, many civil suits that were filed by the families of these uh, victims who died. I think it's perfectly reasonable for, for people to be concerned when they go to the hospital because you know you never know what's going to happen on any day, wherever you are. But people should know that the majority of doctors and nurses out there are trying to do the right thing. They are trying to help you. And I have never seen anyone order that amount of fentanyl for a patient. People should not be surprised when they go to the hospital. You shouldn't be scared if the doctor tries to give you fentanyl because it is a medication that we give to people in the hospital and the ER every day. But again, we typically give very low doses. So if you're scared, it's okay. You can always ask what dose you're receiving. You can ask to see the medication bottle or the medication syringe that's being administered to you. That is your right. Um, and But it's very, very good also to ask questions and, and always ask what's going on in the hospital setting. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, for your input. It bothers me that a woman was convicted of negligence for one patient's death. And this man got off with 14 patients dying under his direction. If this was a woman or even yet a black woman, she will be convicted and thrown under the jail. Under patriarchal rule, this doctor literally got away with murder. Well, it's time for a break. Why was a mother in queen stabbed 55 times last week? Can you think of one activity that's guaranteed to bring a smile to your face? Answer to these questions and more right after the break. Be right back. Hi, I'm Angelica Maria Chesimoa, founder of Omekwa, and I have a very important message to share with you. What you've been told about self-care is wrong. Now, I learned the truth about self-care when last year I went through a three-month-long depressive episode. It was difficult and none of the typical things you hear about self-care like affirmations, nights in, spa days, none of that was working for me. But I learned that there are three main pillars to self-care that I use to bring myself out of it. And that's your body, your mind, and your spirit. So with this in mind, I created the self-care success system. And at Omekawa, we have an exclusive membership community and service called Oasis, where you can get personalized herbalist guidance for your body, wellness classes and workshops by holistic experts for your mind, and a community for your spirit of women that want to see you grow and thrive. Go to omekawa.com where you can take our free self-care success assessment and find out the five steps to build your core pillar and create a lifestyle you deserve. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear that the New York Police Department announced that a handyman has been officially charged with the murder of Orsalia Gile, a queen's wife and mother whose body was found in a nearby park? According to reports, David Bonola was Orsalia's handyman, and she'd been having an intimate affair with him for nearly two years before breaking it off and leaving a note on her refrigerator that read, get a new handyman. On April 15th, David Bonella arrived at Orsalia's home after midnight, and the two went to the basement to talk so they wouldn't wake up her 13-year-old son, who was asleep upstairs. Bonola proceeded to argue with her about their relationship ending, and she asked him to leave. 
In a fit of rage, he grabbed a knife from the kitchen, slashed her throat, and stabbed her 55 times before stuffing her body into her son's duffel bag and dragging it to a nearby park to discard it. A jogger spotted the blood-soaked duffel bag near a busy walking trail and reported it to the police. The police were able to follow a trail of blood back to the woman's home. The next day, the murder weapon was recovered from the scene of the crime, as well as video surveillance of Bonola walking home from the park. Investigators surveilled Bonola's home, intercepting the trash pickup to find bloody clothes he threw away. Orsaya's husband and 17-year-old son were out of town doing the slaying. No means no. Stop means stop. So a woman can't break up with a man without being murdered? Well, just put an S on my chest because I'm staying single. Mm -mm. In other news, we're out here trying to live the feisty life. And honestly, even with so much danger and angst circumventing the world, we have to make time for self-care and activities that make life rich. We can't allow the world to drag us down. We have to keep pushing forward. We have to create as many good times as we can. I know a woman who knows all about creating good times. In this week's edition of The Feisty Life, Cho tells us all about one thing she does that always lights up her life. Cho, what do you do to turn your frown upside down? Hi, my name is Cho and I love, love, love doing ballroom dancing. By day, I am an acupuncturist and Chinese medicine practitioner where I actually stick people with the needles and help them heal. But whenever I get a chance, I love to do dancing and my passion is ballroom dancing. As a child, I used to watch all the Fred Astaire and Ginger movies that would come on as a replay during the summer and they were black and white movies and they were playing at 11 o'clock at night. And then I had an opportunity when I was in seventh grade to go to a prom and our teacher hired a dance instructor to teach us the hustle. And that was a long time ago. And after that, I just loved, loved dancing and always wanted to do ballroom. Eventually, I took lessons at Fred Astaire when I was in my 20s. And before you know it, I was addicted. The feeling of dancing is amazing. You can hear the music and you're dancing with a partner so you feel all the energy moving between you and there are other people on the floor and everyone is having a really good time. The other thing about ballroom dancing is it's really good for your memory and also good for your posture and it helps you to lose weight. Um, feeling really good and dancing with music is also a way to stimulate endorphins. So whenever I get a chance, I love to go dancing with my partner. If you're interested in seeing more of me dancing, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Cho Lin Loy. Thank you, Cho, for reminding us that even through the madness, life is still worth living if we choose to create good time. Well, thank you for watching the feisty news for women. I am Tierica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the